Hello and welcome to the Happy Bear Cooking Show. Starring Woo! Stephen Flynn, David Flynn. So welcome to 10 minute easy, delicious chili. This is super banging. This is a Mexican chocolate chili. This just isn't a normal chili and it's I, I, designed to optimize your digestion. So it's for good health. So first step, we've got two pans in a high heat. We've got a large non-stick pan and we've got a small pan. And the small pan is for cooking tempeh or tofu. We're gonna include this te to tempeh or tofu. They're both bean based. They're full of phytoestrogens. They're packed with protein and fiber and they're full of goodness. There's most of it's complex carbohydrates. If I can't get tempeh, Steve, can I just use tofu? Of course you can. Yeah, okay, cool. So we've got a small little pancake pan. I'm just popping them in. We're gonna cook this with no oil because oil is empty calories. Although it will increase our you know, burning temperature and it'll give a more even distribution of heat. There's a course of empty calories, so we're gonna cook this. If you wanna put in oil, you can, but we're not. So into our large bottom. So that's large bottom nonstick pan. We are going with some scallions. These are gonna be a foundation ingredient for a chili. Why are we putting the white bit on? We're gonna leave off the white bit because it's very high in fermentable carbohydrates and we're just gonna make this very good for your gut. So we're not gonna include these. So we'll keep them to use another day. Okay, our pan is nice and hot. I've got the green part of scallions, also known as green onions. In they go. I've got one carrot and I'm just gonna grate it in. So grate it in using just a simple box grater. Get your twin to do it, obviously, if you're busy yourself chopping the veg. Hey! Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> that was a really bad joke, isn't it? Uh, you're laughing with the best bit. Okay, so we have two peppers, also known as capskin, also known as, I'm not sure So what. Steve, tell me, is diversity very important for, for uh, so good health? So as with life and as with any ecosystem, diversity is vital if you're gonna have a healthy ecosystem. And similarly, your microbiome, or your um, collection of bacteria that live in your large intestine, um, one of the single biggest things to the health of your gut is down to diversity, and the diversity of bacteria. So the more you can eat diverse foods, the more you are gonna build a more resilient microbiome, where 70% of your immune systems exist. Lots of people kinda eat just five different foods over and over and over. In the American Good Project, they found out that- Even, even on that one, can I just say one thing oh, that- No, no, Actually, 50% of the world's calories come from just three foods. Oh yeah, and 75 come from 12. Did you know that? 75% come from 12 foods, so if that's reflective of you, that's so. Okay, so- No, 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 let me just finish this. So they found out that in terms of good health, that if you could eat more than 30 different fruit and veg per week, your microbiome was, went into super functioning microbiome. And they found out that typically only one in 250 people actually achieved this. So. Here's your challenge. Can you eat 30 different types of fruit and veg per week? And by cooking a recipe like this, you're gonna get about 10 to 12 different types of fruit and veg. So this recipe, good for good health. Okay, we're gonna turn our tempeh. Oh, wow, that was kind of good, wasn't it? So we just seared our, our um, tempeh. You see the way it's golden and yellow on one side? And over here in the main pot, we've literally, we've got our scallions and our carrot, and we've just chopped in two capsicums, a red one and a yellow one. So we're gonna go with one red chili. Leave the seeds in if you like it hot, and remove them if you prefer it best hot. And this really is a 10 minute dish. It's packed with diversity. It's got about 10 or 12 different uh, fruits, vegetables, beans, herbs, and seeds in it. It's really high in fiber, and fiber is the single biggest thing that you can do in terms of your gut health. Eat more fiber-rich foods. And do people normally eat enough fiber? Like no, most awesome. people, the average person, 95 to 97% of people don't get enough fiber on a daily basis, and you only get fiber in whole plant, plant foods. So, and by whole plant foods, I'm not talking about um, da daffodils and roses. Oh, 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 oh. I'm talking about um, Crap, fruits, all. vegetables. I apologize for my brother. Beans, whole grains. Okay, in goes our red chili. Yeah. So if I don't like it spicy, what do I do? Just leave it out. Okay. Okay, so Steve, if I suffer with IBD flare-ups or ulcerative colitis and I suffer and I, I get flare-ups, what should, should I cut out these foods or what would you so think? What have you found? Fibers, so we have a Good Health Revolution course with a consultant gastroenterologist, big word for a... Digestion doctor and a dietitian. And We've had more than 15,000 people through it from over 100 different countries, and we have run it for the last five years. And it we really found does work. that going when people do have lots of flare ups, like recently, we just literally during the week, I interviewed a lady called Reese, and she had found that her inflammation markers will also have chyla. One tablespoon of smoked paprika. Also, <laughs> colitis. Colitis well done. went from 770 down to seven. Ooh. Which is dramatic. Pretty amazing. It really is amazing. amazing, yeah. So, and that was by pepper. simply um, following our Good Health Revolution little program. Little bit of black pepper. 
It's not just food, there's obviously a lifestyle component to it. Food is one of the anchor stone pieces of it, as well as mindfulness. The best gut health supplement is really down to what you eat and your lifestyle. Those are the two biggest impacts, and they compound over time. They compound in a positive way or a negative way, depending on how you live your life. So I went there with one tablespoon of smoked paprika, a nice pinch of black pepper, two tablespoons of ground cumin. I've got two tins of chopped tomatoes, so that's 800 ml or 800 grams of chopped tomatoes. So another thing that kind of contributes to flare-ups is consumption of food mindfully. As I said, 70% of IBS occurs due to stress. When people are stressed and they eat food, they're, they're kind of highly, the nervous system is highly activated, whereas if you can slow down, chew your food properly, see it as this opportunity to connect with where your food came from, and um, it's gonna affect your body totally different. Yeah, for example, the same meal on a Tuesday might have a complete different effect on your body on a Wednesday, because one day you might be completely stressed and the other day you're very relaxed and at ease, and your body absorbs it accordingly. So stress has a massive impact, and that's why in the Good Health Revolution course, we partnered with a, with a meditation teacher, and she does a meditation for every day of the four weeks, and it's not woo-woo, it's just 10 minutes a day, but as Stephen said, IBS, which is an umbrella term for irritable bowel syndrome, that means where, there's, where you've got constipation or diarrhea or bloating or any of these type of issues, and 70% of that is down to stress. So by reducing your stress, it immediately affects things. Okay, we are making a Mexican chili, and we did mention a chocolate chili. So I've got a nice handful of dark chocolate drops. It's gonna add sweet, it's gonna add fat, and it's gonna add that nice cacao flavor, which is just gonna add this kind of rich, dark, and um, hue to our These are about 80%, are they? Yeah. Yeah. So dark chocolate. Right, tempeh is here, it's well seared. See the way it's kind of golden on the outside? I'm gonna give them a two tablespoons of tamari. Tamari is a wheat-free soy sauce. Woo! I'm gonna knock it off the heat here. Yum, 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 yum. I know you can't smell this yet on this video, but the smell is just amazing. And you can see the way the tempeh is already caramelizing. Okay, so we're gonna go with beans. Obviously, if you do suffer with IBD or ulcerative colitis and you are sensitive to beans, just put in less beans. You can tolerate a small little amount, but beans, they really are a superfood. When people consistently ask me, what's the best superfood? I go with beans. If you look at the longest living people on the planet from the blue zones, 50% of their calories come from beans. And they're full of phytoestrogens. So they're great for balancing hormones. They got protein, they're cheap, they're affordable. And as we said, fiber is the single biggest thing you can do to improve your good health. Uh, so I've got a little bit of coriander that I'm gonna add. I'm gonna add in the stalk of it first, and then we're gonna keep the leaves for garnish, really, if I can separate them. We've made this recipe very quick, so if you haven't followed, we've got the full written recipe in a link down below. And Dr. Alan Desmond, the consultant gastroenterologist, he's written an article on the gut-brain axis and how important that is in terms of your mental health and how your gut dramatically affects your moods, your emotions, and even the foods you crave. And usually that'd be in the course, but we've put it on the website just for you to get a taste of what the course itself is like. So here we go, we're gonna taste the dish. Delicious. Well, really important always to season to taste. So before you actually kind of get stuck in. Mm. Really nice flavor, needs plenty more salt. So good, generous pinch of salt. Beautiful. Nice it's very tasty, nice easy. Sweet and salt. This is super wholesome and really, really tasty. And served with the tempeh, it'll really be a fantastic dish. So there's two aspects to this. If you suffer with gut issues, really, we know life is hard enough without them, so we really sympathize and empathize with you. Empathize. Empathize. And if you do want to improve your gut health, really, fiber is so important. And eating dishes like this that are high in fruits, veg, whole and grains diversity. and beans is so, so, so important. So like as Hippocrates said, two and a half thousand years ago, all disease starts in the gut. And as we found in our gut health revolution, health starts in the gut too. And it's simple, it's easy, it's accessible to all. And the benefits are just amazing. So if you're interested, we've got our gut health revolution course. I'll put a link down below, um, as well as the link to the recipe. And really, thanks Mill for joining us today. We really, really appreciate it. And we've got tons more recipes here if you're interested in more. So thanks Mill. Bye. Bye.